try to marry innovations of our, within our product line to the Sunfest brand, and that's how an interim hub committed Red Stripe is to Sunfest. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for having us again this year, and looking forward to tomorrow tonight and tomorrow night. Thank you very much, Blandine. Blandine Jean-Paul Reed, Head of Marketing at Red Strap. And while we get to the second refreshment sponsor, so uh, you heard your name already, you know, you're supposed to be standing up, all right? But I'll, I'll say it again. Mitch Watson, Marketing Manager of Pepsi. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members of the head table, our visitors from overseas, the journalists who travel from far within Europe, Canada, the United States, and locally from Kingston, Antigua Bay, welcome. You know, as we sat at the table, myself and Mr. Barnes, we sat there and we said, what am I going to say when I go up here? I think I should just say ditto, 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 and say thank you very much and move on. Because I think so much has been said. The truth is, for us at Pepsi, it is not just a partnership, it's a journey. It's like a family arrangement. For me, I'm from Montego Bay, moved to Kingston. I saw this product come to life from the beginning. I was there working and running in the backstage area. Then some years later, I started working on the beach party. I've seen one or two of them. So we know where it's coming from. We've seen it. Personally, I know the substance. I know what it means for the people of Montego Bay. And when Robert Russell comes out and says, Montego Bay is full and hotels are full, people question the validity of the statement. But you who have been here for the last couple of days, you'll see the traffic. For those who have tried to get hotel rooms, you'll experience the difficulty it has been to get a hotel room. And that's good for us, and it means it's good for some fans. Another member of the team said how wonderful last night was. But I heard people complaining, boy, I don't know if I can make it to some fest this year because the ticket price is going to be high. But when I looked out in the crowd last night, we should stop complaining that Jamaica don't have no money. Because I don't think that's really the truth. There is money existing everywhere. But let me say this. Pepsi has partnered with Sunfest this year in a way that is a little bit different. We looked around and we wanted to do a music event. And we coined one which we call the Pepsi Refresh Tour. We started in Kingston. Um, in Portmore, to be specific, then we went to the Hope Zoo. Saturday night is the culmination of that product, where we will have our artist, Chi Ching Ching, you saw him last night performing with Popcorn, but you will also see Zaga, you'll see Ikea, Rain Seville, and of course, you will also see a number of the international acts doing their thing. It's going to be a blessing. Day. It will be a blessed night. It will be an experience not to miss. And I'm encouraging you to come out. That's our contribution to the festival, which I think means a lot for the local artists because too often you hear corporate Jamaica does not support local musicians. Corporate Jamaica does not do enough to support the artists who are struggling to make. So we stepped out and did it this year. Thank you very much, Mitch Watson of Pepsi. Our final sponsor that we want to share with you at this particular moment in time. Again, another big sponsor, and we are glad to have them on board. We would like to welcome the managing director himself, who is here, Mr. Christopher Barnes of The Gleaner. Ditto was my joke, so since Mitch matched it up, I don't have a joke. Why is it that we're doing this? First of all, the star is a brand that is a part of the Gleaner Group. It is the people's paper, the people's publication. Why do we do it? The reason why we do it is the reason why media is here. This is probably one of the richest offerings of content in Jamaica. But there's another reason why we do it. And certainly from the Gleaner's point of view, it is because it is promotion of something that is developmental to Jamaica. I don't think that there is one person who can argue the quality of the performances and the content that was displayed last night. 
So our job at the cleanup, and most importantly, the star this year, is to make sure that that content gets distributed to those who are present and also those who are not so present coming from all corners of the globe. Jamaican music content, reggae music, is something that is in high demand globally, and it is us who are here to make sure that people get it. So what am I talking about? Social media is big. We've been putting up a lot of content from last night on Instagram. If you're not following us, you should, at Jamaica Star, at Jamaica Star. We've also been doing a lot with Twitter. We have a lot of followers. We've been re retweeting what Songfest and Tina and everybody's been putting out. Again, just mass distribution. If you don't want it that way, you can follow up online. You can download the new Star Android app, which is a mobile app that anywhere in the world, you have a local copy of the Star's content in your device. Locally, the paper today, the Weekend Star, would have had some photo coverage, and there's more publications that will be coming through the rest of the week with the rich photo coverage. So, in the spirit of TI, you can have whatever you like. Any way that you want to consume our content, we are delivering for you. And that is one of the best synergies for this association. 23 years, gentlemen, congratulations. Actually, Tina, congratulations. Very good. Like me, these gentlemen get to sit down here and look pretty while the real work goes on in the crowds. So I'd like to big up Terry Wilson, my marketing manager. And I'll just let you know that before, when I pulled up here in my car, I didn't have this shirt on. I had on some old rusty gleaner shirt that I think I wore to one of these um, conferences last time, uh, press conferences last time. And she made sure that it was pressed and delivered and okay, roll up your sleeves and things. So thank you very much. There's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that things are executed successfully. And it is as a result of all of you in the crowd who help the head table here. Couldn't do it without the other sponsors. What you are doing is you're promoting Jamaica, you're promoting development in Jamaica, and you're promoting our rich culture. Thank you very much, Mr. Christopher Barnes, Managing Director of The Gleaner, and that completes the presentation of our sponsors, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, and we thank them all very much for their involvement, uh, their enthusiasm, and their continuity, and look forward to having them again next year. Now, we are getting to a very special presentation that we would like to make, and I'm going to make, and I'm going to be inviting the Executive Director of Summerfest Productions a few remarks as we continue with our program. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Gazar. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to, first of all, call up Mr. Brian Smith from Irie. I know he's here. What about you can give for him? recognition of 25 years in the business, I would like to, on behalf of the Sunfest team, make a little presentation to IRFM, the number one reggae radio station in Jamaica, and a Sunfest partner, a Sunfest supporter for all the years of Sunfest. Tonight is going to be another great Sunfest offering. 
We have, of course, Common and T.I., but we also have some young reggae lions, young guns that we'll be presenting tonight. Starting off with Oriel, a young reggae singer out of Pittsburgh, flew down on his own to make sure that he was going to be on the Sunfest stage. We also have a little princess from the North Coast by the name of Kareen. You have to come and see her perform. Very, very, very talented. And then we have Raging Fire, Kes Namdi, we have Jesse Royal, and we have Kabaka Pyramid. These, these artists are flying the reggae flag very, very hard. And I am very proud that we will be able to present these artists on the stage tonight. And last but not least, by any means, we have the great Coco T that is going to lock it down. Not as late as late as saw this morning, but we will lock it down properly. And of course, tomorrow, we have the great Jennifer Hudson, who will be making her first Jamaican appearance. We have young Yaz the Greatest, who social media kind of booked him for us because, you know, it kept blowing up like, oh, why don't you get this young artist? First album, first time traveling overseas, so he's cutting, cutting his teeth, so to speak, on the Sunfest stage. I wish him well. And the mighty be the man will be locking down the festival tomorrow night. You know, Chris Martin, very talented artist, lost. And of course, the Pepsi Refresh Hour will be there. So, I would say that this year we are making great, great, uh, should I say, we are taking steps to ensure that patrons enjoy a senior offering from Reggae Songfest. And I would also like to say that we would not be up here without the sponsors sitting here on my left. It has been a journey from 1993. We went there, nobody knew who we were, you know, the, the other festival had moved on and we went there saying, well, we, we can't leave this void in Montego Bay, so help us out. Red Stripe did, the tourist board did. Later on, of course, Digicel came on board. Pepsi has been on board for a long time. We're in contract with the Gleaner. And I can tell you, I be a star. Oh man. What would we do without them? Ain't he now? It might have aged you six months, but it would have aged you 50 years without I be a star, I can tell you. And of course the press. You have come from year one and you have continued to come over the 23 years of the festival. You have spread the gospel world, worldwide and I don't know what we would do without you. I mean, sincere appreciation to each and every one of you who come to Reggae Song Fest year after year. New ones come. But we, I see faces that have been coming to Reggae Song Fest for 20 years. You know, so you also have been part of this incredible journey. And it's not going to stop right now. So be with us, support us. We have to keep the music alive. Greatest genre of music in the world. Reggae music, Reggae Song Fest. Thank you very much, Johnny. Johnny Gazong, Executive Director, Summerfest Productions. We're now at the point in the uh, program, journalists, that we are going to be introducing a couple of the artists that we have. We ask that you give a warm welcome to poet and rapper, Common.
We have one more performer for the weekend here with us, and it gives us great pleasure to introduce to you, and by extension, to Jamaica, superstar of the screen and music, Jennifer Hudson. to thank Carmen, T.I. and Jennifer Hudson very much for taking the time to be here with us this afternoon. We know that uh, you have a lot of things to do and Ooh. just need First time performing in Jamaica, can you tell me what's going through your mind right now? Well, well actually it's my second time. Okay. And I am just as excited as the first time. Um, as I'm happy to be with these guys, T.I. and Carmen, you know. So it brings a whole new feel. So I'm excited, I just love it here. I'm so glad. Right here, um, I am from TDJ Intense and I have a question for Common. How do you think performing on the Reggae Sunfest stage will benefit your growth as an, as an artist? As an artist, I mean, well, first and foremost, this is my first time getting to perform here. Um, in Jamaica, so I'm very, like, honored. I'm, I, the first trip I ever made to Jamaica, my mother was trying to take me out of Chicago to just see something else. So just being able to come here now as a performer is an inspiration for me. And to be here at the Reggae Sunfest uh, amongst like people that just enjoy music and just like it, the vibe in Jamaica is always free and the people just seem so real and authentic. And like to be amongst these talented artists and some of the artists that we perform with from Jamaica and just to get to vibe with that crowd is, is, is it, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking to grow. So I know, you know, when I perform, I'm always learning something, I'm always delivering something. And th with this being my first time, I get a feeling of growth of what Jamaica is. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. My name is Nina Simone from Entertainment Report. My question is kind of similar. Um, Jamaica is a pretty tough audience to please. Come on, you have a great catalog. However, it's not as common in Jamaica as you'd like. So based on that, how do you think your performance will fare tonight? Well, my whole, my whole life I've been fighting to, you know, to get people to hear my music. I started as an underground artist, and for a long time, that's just what they considered me. So I go places now, and people don't know my music, but, you know, the, the thing, I think the job of, of a performer is to, is to entertain the crowd, give the crowd something that they feel. So even if they don't know your songs, you deliver a true music to them feel. I 
I'm sure tonight will be much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got somebody else here, yes? Hello, I'm at the theme for Jennifer Hudson. After some place, you'll be prepared to play Shakira in the color purple. I was going to put a few to take on this Broadway role. How do you feel about doing that? You know what? I am nervous as hell about going to Broadway, to be honest, because it's a it's an industry that I have the utmost respect for, and I do think it's out of, I've been able to perform probably in almost every facet of entertainment, um, but I feel like with theater, it's a live show every night, you know what I mean? Like, so those vocal cords has to be awake, you know, you have to have that same energy to deliver each and every show, and it's gonna take a lot of discipline to build up to that. And I've been moving around for like 15 years straight, nonstop. So for all of that to just stop, and it to be about one stage with a very intimate audience, I feel like that's a, a very, um, um, like the ultimate challenge as a performer to perform, if that makes any sense. Yes, it certainly does, thank you. And right here, yes, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Rebel Davis. Um, I'm from the Huffington Post in the US. Hey guys, good to see you here. Um, I have a question for Jennifer Hudson. It's very specific. Um, writing for beauty and fashion, and I want to know what's going to inspire your look tonight. Are you inspired by anything, any fashion and beauty trends you see here in Jamaica? And it's so that. funny you asked that question, not to cut you off, but girl, I brought everything out of my closet. I had to get an extra hotel room just to put all the clothes in, and I don't know what I'm going to wear, but I'm going to figure it out. But I like to be inspired by the people, so something out there is going to inspire my look. Or I think I'll perform tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, we'll come see you But um, I don't know yet, but I brought a lot of stuff, so I'm prepared. We'll find out. Yes? Go ahead, and turn. Me again, Akeem from FIBA TV. Question to TI. Uh, just, you, you've, you've done quite a few collaborations. I don't know. Um, um, can we see any from any Jamaican artists, dancehall artists? You know, I actually, my very first record that people ever heard from me was I'm Serious featuring Man. And, uh, I, have a, I have a huge amount of respect uh, for, for, for the dance hall and, and, and reggae uh, genre. I just, and I would honestly work with, you know, just about anybody who on top of their game, and you know what I'm saying, who really, I guess, demanding the attention of the people. Uh, it's just about, with me, I think it's always about chemistry. Whenever you collaborate with an artist, you just kind of want to build off something other than business. You know what I mean? Because if business is the, the platform for it all the time, then that means anybody with some money can come and do a song. But a lot of times it's about, you know, just the chemistry, how we vibe together, what you have to offer, what I have to offer, how we mix it together to, you know, to bring about the best, the best outcome. So, yes, I would definitely love to work with other dancehall artists. I mean, I'm just waiting on the proper opportunity to develop the right chemistry. All right, we're just gonna get to about the last two right now, sir. Hello, my name is Rob Kenner from Boom Shots in Mass Appeal. Uh, wanted to direct this to Colin, first of all. Um, congratulations on your Academy Award for the song from Glory. Um, of course, the Selma spirit is rising very strong in America right now. It seems like there's another wave of civil rights and uh, consciousness amongst the hip hop generation right now. I just wanted to hear in your words if you see any inspiration from reggae music and Jamaican culture in that sense of consciousness and you know self-determination among the youth through music. Yes. That's a great question. Thank you first and foremost. Um, I, I definitely see that young reggae artists will be speaking out because I just feel like young people in general like are at that point where they, they had enough. And they, they are not only speaking out through music, but they, they are protesting, they coming up with ideas. They, they not only on Instagram and tweeting about it, but they like really being active and trying to come up with new things. So I do see reggae artists and hip hop artists coming out speaking about speaking about the injustices that's going on, speaking about what's going on in the communities and ways to, to change it. Because every you know, all the people really want to see a better world. Like the people that, that do have a microphone, it's not like they wanted to sit down and see the world bad. We want to see the world better. 
us. So I do believe that these reggae artists will come out and speak out. And we're going to take one more. All right, please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Oli Matatel. I'm with REFM. I used to be the executive director for the National Voting Rights Museum in Selva, Alabama. And we've always tried to merge social justice and music. Throughout your career, you've always maintained a very conscious platform. Can you explain why you've never deviated from your form of music and why message music is so important, especially at this time? Well, I grew up and my mother was a teacher. And she used to always like look out for kids that was just in her classes and stuff. And um, actually, my mother taught I think she talked close to where Jennifer grew up around, which was tough in the neighborhood. So I always felt a responsibility watching my mother that I could help people too. And when I got an opportunity to get a platform, I knew that music was a way for me to go out and, and help, you know, improve the world in any way that I can. I ain't perfect, but I just tell stories and talk about things that I think could be inspiring to others. Um, also using the the, the power that we get as, as artists and as entertainers to change the world in that way. And I just feel responsible in a way that like, when I see people that don't have, I feel like I can offer something to them. I want to help. And you know, I, I know I'm blessed and we're blessed to, to have a microphone and be able to say something to the world. So why not, why not use that for a better purpose? We use it for something that's, that's positive and, and it's going to improve lives. So that's, that's why I keep doing what I do. All right, thank you very much, members of the media. Before we close off, I don't know if uh, T.I. or Jennifer or Carmen, you want to say a final word as we prepare for our musical feast between tonight and tomorrow. We just say we're grateful to be here. Well, I can speak, I mean, for all, I think I can speak for all of us. All right. We're <laughs> grateful to be here, and, and uh, it's a blessing to be here in Jamaica. We thank y'all for welcoming us like the way you welcome us. It's great to be at the Reggae Sound Fest. And then I'm, I'm glad to be here with these talented artists. Okay, at this point in time, and uh, so we are going to invite the chairman of uh, some of us to uh, make the final remarks, and uh, we will have another quick photo opportunity for you. But could you welcome Mr. Robert Russell, please? Oh, yeah. very special guest. Welcome, welcome to Jamaica, welcome to our press conference. I feel very honored to be in the same room as you people are, but also to sit beside you is a signal honor that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Thank you all for coming. It's really great to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming to our press conference. Some of us have had uh, three events so far. Our beach party, which was a fantastic success. The all-white party at Pier 1, which was unreal. And last night was a night to remember. Ladies saw close what I thought was probably the best dance hall event that I have seen. And to see, to see crowds of people waiting to hear Lady Saw at 6 o'clock in the morning was unbelievable. And nobody left. They stood, they waited, they enjoyed it, and they left when it was over. And that to us is meaningful and it says something about the music. I want to thank our sponsors because without sponsors, it would be impossible to put this show on. Johnny always helps me to do the vote of thanks. And he thanked the sponsors already. I want to thank the artists, not only our overseas artists, but our Jamaican artists who every year put on an extra special show for Reggae Sunfest. They buy new clothes, they get new songs rehearsed, and it's amazing to see the kind of energy that is created at Reggae Subfest. I want to thank our staff, people that work tirelessly. People mentioned Tina. Tina is like the two mules that I know. 
One was willing and the other one was able. And when willing was not able, able was willing. Thank you, Tina. We get the credit for putting on the show, but Tina does all the work. I want to thank the Iberia Star, who is a sponsor of some place, but they have been a tower of strength. Philip Hoffa has been great. He has really come forward and every step of the way he has performed. I want to thank the staff of Iberia Star, I want to thank Philip and for giving us this fantastic venue to have our press conference. Thank you.